Ladies and gentlemen, let's recommend this video video. If you're an early adopter of virtual reality or you own a 4K display, there's a good chance that you at least have some passing interest in dual GPU solutions from both Nvidia and AMD. In the case of AMD, everyone has been waiting for news on the Fury X2, specifically the release date for the card. We've known at least the basic specifications for it for some time now. It is, of course, essentially an R9 Nano x 2. That would be, of course, two Nano GPUs on the same board, which would give it a grand total of 8,192 stream processors and a rather staggering amount of performance, around 16.3 8 T flops is what many are estimating it to be. That would be FP32. Now, it has been confirmed that the card is going to be suffering a delay. I'm going to read out the reasoning from AMD themselves. This was a quote given to hardware.fr when they were questioning why the Gemini, which is of course the code name for the Fury X2, is going to be delayed. The product schedule for Fiji Gemini initially had been aligned with consumer HMD availability and had been scheduled for Q4 2015 back in June. Some delays due to the VR in overall ecosystem readiness, HMDs are now expected to be available to consumers by early uh, 2016 to ensure the best RV experience. We're adjusting the Fiji Gemini launch to schedule to better align with the market. We're working. Samples of Fiji Gemini have shipped to a variety of B2B customers in Q4 2015 and initial customer reaction has been very positive." End quote. Now, Obviously, we can only read between the lines, but it is possible that AMD are kind of using this to their advantage by simply saying, you know what, we needed more time, maybe the, maybe the GPUs were putting out more heat, maybe they needed to work more on the cooling solution, or maybe they are just pretty much being completely honest. Regardless of the fact, it makes the timeline for this a rather interesting, because if you think about it, from what we've heard from various sources and once again sources aren't exactly well always accurate but many are reporting even routers at this point that we're going to be seeing the next generation cards from AMD popping out at some point mid next year so if AMD take too long you're essentially going to be biting into their own market with this particular car now historically we all know that the dual cards typically outperform the flagship for the next generation. So for the sake of argument, if you have GPU-1, that's the first generation of cards with its dual variant, and then the next generation cards are flagship, and typically the dual from the previous generation does outperform that, but obviously there are some caveats, it requires a lot more power, titles have to run and be able to fully take advantage of a dual GPU solution and all of the other stuff that you can imagine and in the case of course of the Fury um, DirectX 11 you only get four gigabytes for the particular game even in crossfire mode obviously DirectX 12 will take advantage of that and fully allow you to leverage the eight gigabytes of memory um, rather than just duplicating the data across both memory pools as I've potentially alluded to several times over now, I think buying a 1080p card, maybe even a 1440p capable card is absolutely perfect at this time because there are a lot of excellent options which aren't going to really go down that much. You can start doing the GPU shuffle as well, maybe sell a little early. And obviously if you're stuck on a lower, res lower resolution excuse me, monitor, it's not too much of a big deal anyway. However, if you're going to be investing a significant chunk of change, and let's face it, the Gemini is not going to be just a few dollars. It's going to be really expensive, as you'd expect, for such a large uh, PCB in terms of the sheer number of components and expense of those components uh, contained within. I think that if it turns out that it's going to be, let's say, March that this thing's released, it's going to be quite a tough sell, at least in my opinion. It's like... If you know that you're going to be spending, let's say for the sake of argument, a thousand dollars on a GPU or the best part of a thousand dollars on a GPU in March or April or whenever that card's released, but just a few months later a new card is going to be 
released, which is obviously the next generation, it features considerably more performance or better performance per watt at the very least. It's kind of like difficult to really market that towards someone. Yes, technically you have the fastest card, which is really, to be honest, what a lot of this is about. It's it's about the PR of saying that we have the fastest card on the market. Um, it's not that dual GPUs sell really, really well or anything like that. Of course, they do have, once again, the advocates and people who absolutely love them, particularly if you're running a smaller case, if you only have limited number of PCIe slots, that type of thing, it's quite handy. But generally speaking, you know, most people, particularly if they're um, high-end gamers, they like to go with the one and done idea. You know, with one single high-end GPU, unless once again they're running those ultra-high resolution displays or you're an early adopter of uh, virtual reality. And we all know that VR is going to be extremely intensive on the GPU. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll let's see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.